Welcome to Fluent Minutes, and as always, we got to start by asking, are you fluent? Today we're talking about equal pay for male and female athletes. So over the, uh, the course of the last maybe six or eight months, there was an article, there's a couple posting, you've probably seen it on social media, where it showed Sue Bird and her accomplish accomplishments versus LeBron James and his accomplishments, and then showing the discrepancy in their pay. Now, Sue Bird also came out and said the fight for equal pay. You've also seen the U.S. Uh, women's soccer team being huge proponents of, of equal pay. And I get it, but there's something you should know. One, Sue Bird wasn't asking to get paid the same amount as LeBron James. So let's be clear on that. I think that was a bit of a misconception and people jumped all over her. That's not the case. Now, what we need to do is identify, one, the differences between athletics and business. I think in business, there should be equal pay for equal work. If you're the CEO of Coca-Cola as a man and a new CEO comes in as a female and gets the exact same job, then yes, should be paid the same. Or if you're Coke, Pepsi, I get it. But those jobs, it's very clear, are based on revenue, right? The CEO of Coke gets paid significantly more than the CEO of the dollar store. Yeah, obviously, Coca-Cola brand is a much larger revenue business than the dollar store, I would assume. So it's the same in athletics. You can't you know, expect someone to make $35 million a year if the entire league makes $35 million a year. In fact, the previous example of Sue Bird and, and LeBron James, they actually get around the same percentage of total league revenue. What the issue I believe in sports, however, is is that female sports aren't generating the amount of revenue. And it's not because it's not a quality game, it's because we've been kind of used to things being a certain way. Now, I do a show every week with Hugh Jackson, a former NFL coach, now current offensive coordinator of the Tennessee State University. And there's a saying that we use almost every week, just because it's normal doesn't make it right. So the NBA has been around for around 75 years. So obviously it has grown in popularity. It's had its ups and downs. It's gone through kind of the cycle of any other business. And it is where it is today because of those 75 years. The WNBA as a, as a comparison has been is celebrating actually its 25th year. So obviously it won't be on the same level of the NBA. However, the differences between the two in terms of revenue and viewership, and that is huge. And part of that is the way that it had been marketed previously. I think we're all used to watching male sports uh, when it comes to the, the big ones, like when we're talking basketball, football, uh, hockey, baseball, etc. But it's not to say that the WNBA isn't a valuable league. It is. In fact, fundamentally speaking, skill-wise, there's tons of athletes in the WNBA who could compete in the NBA. I'm not the only one who, who thinks that. The late, great Kobe Bryant came out and said almost that same thing verbatim, is that there are athletes in the WNBA that could compete in the NBA. So have you given the WNBA a chance? I don't know. Have you given female full contact football a chance? I don't know, but I think you should because the only thing holding back these ladies from getting the pay that I think they deserve for what they do is viewership, right? If we watch, if we buy the merchandise, if we buy the jerseys,